welcome to the channel we're going to discuss some power stations today I'm going to go over the EB70 which is from Blue Eddy it is a 700 watt inverter 716 watt hour capacity battery and basically talk about reasons that you need a portable power station first we'll take a look at uh, tent camping basically these things can come in handy if you're uh, needing lights needing a fan you can run a, a icy breeze portable air conditioner um, these are great for boondocking with an rv basically um, if you are somewhere where you don't have a power source this can help you the same thing with lights fans um, little mini heaters heating blankets things like that uh, a lot of uses for them charging your phones your tablets uh, your ipads um, your drones camera batteries a lot of different uses for this particular model um, the other thing is if it, for travel um, like one of the reasons uh, one of the uses we use this for is to run a portable uh, refrigerator when we're going to the grocery store so we can keep our items cold and it's great also if you're taking vacations or whatever to have in the car um, if you're with the kids or the grandkids and they have their devices and um, games that they want to have charged up you can plug them into this and keep them entertained while you're you know on the road and one of the other things that can help you with probably maybe the most important is uh, emergency backup it can help you in the event of a power outage uh, whether it be short term long term and this is a really good power station for that um, it can help run a refrigerator for a short period of time it can give you lights it can give you fans in your house it can do a lot of different things um, keep your again like we say your tablets your phones um, all charged up so emergencies is a is a good um, reason to have one of these portable power stations now there's many different types out there on the market and many different uh, materials that are used to for, for the battery you know so we just want to briefly touch on those and and talk about this one specifically but basically you have mainly three types of batteries you got your seal sealed uh, lead acid batteries your uh, lifepo 4 or what they also call lithium iron phosphate and then you have your lithium ion batteries those are your primary batteries that are in these types of power stations now your sealed uh, lead acid batteries um, it's an older technology they're good batteries but you and, and they're a lot cheaper than the lithium ion or the the life po4 um, but you sacrifice um, longevity with those they only usually last two to three years maybe have about 500 cycles uh, charge cycles in them but uh, let me correct myself two to three hundred charge cycles in them um, and then you just have to replace the battery uh, there are some units out there that do sealed lead acid but most of them nowadays are are lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion batteries now the lithium ion batteries uh, is going to give you a lot more longevity um, they'll last anywhere from 500 to 800 cycles depending on um, the company and the material that's inside the charge um, charge wattage and, and things like that so they can last you you know from anywhere like I say from five to eight hundred cycles and what that means is is it doesn't mean that the battery is is gone it just means that uh, once you hit that barrier of five to eight hundred um, you lose the top 20% of the battery. So 80% of the battery is still there. You still have that capacity and it can last you a long, long time. So there's nothing wrong with lithium ion. Um, then you have the lithium iron phosphate, which is what is in the EB70. It has uh, 2,500 cycles before you lose that top 20%. Um, there's advantages to lithium iron phosphate over lithium ion they're a little bit safer you don't have to worry about uh, thermal runaway with these as you might with lithium ion um, now the downside to the the lithium iron phosphate is they are heavier than lithium ion so they 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 weigh a little bit more 
Um, so basically that's the three types of batteries that you're looking at and we could go more in depth on sealed lead acid because you also have just marine lead acid and I'm not going to get into all that but basically those are the three most popular types of batteries um, on the market today and then we'll talk about um, size what size portable power station do you need um, they have various sizes from what they call a micro which is you know up to about 500 watts uh, mid-size which would be you know maybe 500 to a thousand and then you got your large power stations which are going to be a thousand plus um, this one is in that mid-size category um, because it will handle its inverter is 700 watts um, now you want to not confuse the inverter for battery capacity because when you see these sometimes you'll see 700 watt power station or 500 watt power station and you got to verify whether they're talking about the watt hours or the inverter size now this particular one is the inverter size and what that means is, is that's your AC um, it takes the DC voltage and uh, converts it to AC so that's how many watts that you can plug into your AC side um, the watt hours is the capacity 716 watt hours which basically means is if you had an item that was 716 watts it would drain this battery in an hour because what you do is you take your volts times your amps gives you your watts and the watt hours basically is capacity how long will the battery last okay so let's just do a quick rundown of the EB70 we got our four AC outlets it does have a light it has three uh, modes a low high and a strobe not going to turn that on you got your charge um, input here whether it be AC DC for a cigarette lighter or your solar panels all plug with uh, with this uh, outlet right here and the Blue Eddy EB70 comes with all three of those so you have your um, barrel connector which is an eight millimeter barrel connector to MC4 connector eight millimeter to cigarette lighter and then you have your eight millimeter to AC wall outlet and it has the brick with it as well and you turn your AC on just by simply holding that for a second and you can see the light come on there which means that your AC outlets are live so we're just going to hold it again just for a second and it turns it off and your AC is now off and on this side is all your DC you have your 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter here um, this is good for running mini fridges we have a bouge RV that we use this all the time now it, do ha it does have two 12 volt 10 amp 5521 barrel connector outlets I don't have anything that operates off those I could actually you know go online and buy a 5521 to USB so I could actually make these two more USB ports if I wanted to um, these two outlets here are your USB they are the 5 volt 3 amp USB port so you're going to get a, um, up to 15 watts of output from those and then you got your power delivery and the EB70 has two big power delivery ports 100 watts um, these are great for your iMac or excuse me not your iMac but your your laptops your your MacBooks those will really charge that real quick at 100 watts and basically you have your button here to turn it on hold it for a second you see the green light comes on and now our DC is on and that also turns on you have a 15 watt wireless um, charging pad right here for your cell phones if you have a wireless phone you just set it on there we'll set my phone on there and you'll see it start charging and the watts will start to increase so it's showing about three watts there and that might go up a little bit as it figures out how many watts this phone needs to charge so it's a nice little um, power station and basically I'm going to show you 
also how to determine what you can run with this. And basically I got a couple items here. First I'm going to start with this little um, space heater. Now this is a personal space heater. This is not a big one. You don't want to try to run a 1500 watt space heater on this because this is a 700 watt inverter it's not going to run it but basically the way that you can tell if your power station and this is a good way to size your power station as to what you need is think about what you're running with it what you want to run with it here's a little space heater here and i'll put this up here as you can see that this thing will take 300 watts if you look for these tags on all of your appliances most of them will give you either the watts or they will tell you what the volts are with the amperage and you basically just take the volts times the watts and that'll, or excuse me, volts times the amps and that'll give you the watts. So that way you'll know if your power station can run it. So this one says uh, 300 watts at 120 volts. Now let's plug it in. We're gonna turn, we're gonna plug it in first. We're going to turn our AC on and then we're going to turn our switch on and you'll see this. I'm going to turn this away from the camera, but you'll see those volts start to climb. Watts start to climb. Let's take my phone off there so we just get the watts for the heater and it's slowly going up. And it'll continue to get up this has no setting on it it's either on or off so it should climb to up to close to 300 if not a little bit over um, watts 257 269 still going up and it'll settle in so this one's going up a little bit more than what the rating says so we might put a uh, kilowatt on there and just see how accurate that is but it's putting out about 360 watts now now it's settling in and now we're getting closer to that 300 watts that it says on the unit so that's one way you can tell if your power station can run uh, an appliance that you're trying to run just by taking the, the volts times the amps to get the watts of that unit. And I'll you, you show you another example here of another item that I have that um, doesn't give the watts, but it gives the volts and the amps. So this will run that no problem. And this will probably run this little heater for a couple hours based on how many watts that it's pulling. Because basically you have 716 watt hours of capacity and basically you just divide how many watts you're pulling divide by that and that'll tell you how long so if you take 318 and let's just do it here live on camera so you can see so we have a 716 watt hour battery divided by 318 that'll run for about 2.25 hours so basically that's how you determine that. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off, unplug it, and let's use another example. We have a fan here, and I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you can see that little tag. I don't know if that's going to focus for you, but that's what it is, and then I'm going to read it. So basically what you're looking at is it's 120 volts at 60 hertz, and it pulls 0.6 amps. So how many watts is that going to be for the Blue Eddy to handle? So basically we're just going to take 120 times 0.6 and that fan should run at about 72 watts. Now one thing to remember on your power station, this isn't a 120 watt outlet. It's, 100, it's about 110. Let's put our kilowatt on there and we'll show it to you. So you can see your volts is about 110. So that's all that it's going to supply to that. So if we have 110 volts at 0.6 amps, 
we should be running at about 160 or excuse me 66 watts on high now this will run lower because it has three speeds so let's see let's see how close it is let's move this up over so we can see the screen and let's move this to watts and compare the kilowatt to what the EB70 says so our power's on and we're just going to go straight to high and our kilowatt is saying 63.6 bouncing around and it's saying about 57 here and that is on high now the reason that's going to be different again is because this is a 110 outlet the fan will run on that even though on the tag it says 120 at 0.6 amps so we're pretty close but there's about a 5 watt difference between the kilowatt and what the blue eddy says let's turn it on a different speed we'll go all the way down to low Forty-eight watts versus forty-four, so it's close. Not enough to be be upset about. But uh, there you go. That's just a way to tell what type of power station you need to buy is based on what type of appliances that you're going to run. But no, most of these appliances are one ten, and basically you can run between one ten and one twenty um, on these types of appliances, and it's not going to hurt them but uh, this puts out 110 so the watts are a little bit lower than what it's rated for and it's consistently right back up to 62 and 57 so that's a good example now we're going to show you a bunch of stuff plugged into this basically we have an ipad a fire tablet an iphone a portable speaker the heater that we showed you earlier and the fan that we showed you earlier so the dc is on and we're pulling 29 watts from two tablets a phone and a, a bluetooth speaker so let's go ahead and turn the heater on and we'll turn the fan on and we'll see how many watts the eb70 pulls We'll give it a few seconds to wind up because we saw this heater takes a few minutes to get up to its maximum. And you can see that the EB70 is handling all this equipment with no problem whatsoever. We're still well under the 700 watts. It looks like it might be stabilized. And it's running. Yep, looks like we're settling into about 430-ish watts. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six items running off this EB70 right now. And we could actually add a, a, a few more watts to it and still not maybe be at the 70, 700 the watts that it's capable of. So it's a nice unit. Um, I use this thing all the time like I told you in another video we use this a lot just going to the grocery store and, and running our um, 30 quart Bouge RV um, refrigerator freezer and it does no problems I've ran it for as, as long as uh, 13 hours before um, I've never taken it to its max so to be honest I don't know how long it would run it um, because it kicks on and off it's hard to determine but it will run it and this is a regulated output right here too just so you know and and that's one advantage with lifepo it to me it wouldn't matter if it was regulated or not on lifepo because lifepo will stay at around 12 volts when it's at zero you know or just above zero so uh, once it drops that's when it'll cut off so regulated output on a on a life pro battery is not as big as a, a deal as it is on sealed lead acid or uh, lithium ion so um, that's just an example and what I'm going to do too is I'm going to take this and hook it up to my transfer switch as you saw in another video 
and I'm going to turn on all four circuits. Now I'm going to do, not going to do it all at once. We'll do it one at a time, but we'll see if this can handle that. Now I'm just doing that as a test. I'm not doing it. Uh, probably would never use this full time, but just nice to know in an emergency that you could. Um, and basically, my transfer switch runs um, two refrigerators, a freezer. Um, Bed, two bedrooms and a uh, kitchen lights, hallway lights, and what am I missing? All oh, my TVs. So it runs all those things um, in the event of emergency, and I have it hooked up to my AC200P, and that's my primary, and that's what I'd be using for that, but why not hook this up to it and see if it can handle that load? Stay tuned, we'll show that. I have a transfer switch in my house set up to run four circuits, uh, three refrigerators, a microwave, two bedrooms, uh, lights, kitchen lights, hallway lights, and um, a couple TVs with their attachments, Direct TV, Roku, Apple TV. Um, and I'm going to turn that switch on. I'll do it one at a time. We'll start with the refrigerator and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, this is the full-size refrigerator. The EV70 is running this right now. We'll go back and look and see if the watts I'm trying to leave the door open just to have it kick on right now It's off, but you can see the the lights are on and it is running it So we will catch it when it kicks on and record the watts that it's pulling from the EV70 There you can see the refrigerator kicked on And the EB70 is running it with no problem. Now I'll try to do this without making you dizzy. We'll go up to our transfer switch and turn our TV on. Okay, here's the TV with the refrigerator is still on as well. We have a direct TV, we have a Roku and a 42 inch LG TV. Let's go see how many watts it's pulling with the refrigerator. Okay, we have two of our circuits turned on, our main refrigerator, TV, direct TV, Roku. It's pulling 174 watts. And if I wanted to, as you can see, we have no volts or excuse me, watts coming in, but we have 174 going out. Let's put our solar. 200 watts of solar on the roof plugged in. Now you can see we're getting a little bit of watts coming in now. So that's from 200 watts of solar on our roof. 116 watts coming in, 173 going out. Let's try to add some more to the circuit. Let's turn on another transfer switch. Let's see if it will run this freezer and this refrigerator. And it could overload here, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, we turn the transfer switch on to the freezer and the other little refrigerator here in the pantry. Now this thing will surge up to 1400 watts as uh, we talked about earlier. So it'll do 700 watts and surge to 14. So it should handle, so we basically have three refrigerators, excuse me, two refrigerators and a freezer, a TV, a direct TV, and a Roku running off of this right now. Now my fourth circuit is a microwave and some lights. We will not attempt to run the microwave because I know it will not run the microwave. But let's turn the lights on and see what it pulls when we have that other circuit on. Okay, as you can see, 355 watts with all those circuits running. We have 118 coming in from solar. 
Now I just wanted to show you the power of the EB70. I would probably um, not use this in this fashion um, for long term because at that watts it would only run those four circuits for a couple hours. Um, longer with the solar coming in maybe I might get if I did the math I'm just going to do it in my head roughly four hours um, if I was able to do it during the day but at night time you know you're not going to have any watts coming in so you're looking at two hours at night and maybe four hours during the day uh, maybe a little longer but anyway that's if you're not you could turn the TV off what have you but Anyway, it's just to give you an example of the power. So just to, to recap, we have one freezer, two refrigerators. One of the refrigerators is a full-size refrigerator. The freezer is full-size. We have a TV, a Roku, a direct TV, um, and lights in, in two bedrooms and in our kitchen and hallway, all running off of the EB70. The fan has kicked on, but as you can see, this can handle the load and it's handled the surges of the refrigerators and freezers kicking on. Now there's three ways to charge the Blue Eddy EB70, and they all three come through that port right there, but you have your charging brick which I'll show you right here you have a 12 volt outlet or excuse me your tw <laughs> a cigarette lighter outlet which which is from a car or I could literally plug in from uh, the EB150 to there as I've showed you before um, you can charge that way and then by solar and I'm going to show you all three methods but right now I'm showing you we are charging by the uh, wall outlet and it's putting out about 194 watts going in and I just have that plugged in to my AC200P and my AC200P is running my transfer switch as well so my refrigerator and TVs are going off of it right now okay One more time, 194 watts out of the wall outlet. Let's take a look at the DC charging capabilities um, through the cigarette lighter port or you know, DC outlet port in your vehicle. So we're going to plug the EB70 in. Now I have the vehicle running. Give it a second. And there we go, we're starting to charge at 101 watts. So at that rate, if you're on a trip, 716 watt hour power station, charging at 100 watts would be right around seven hours. For the next way to charge, I'm gonna show you the Blue Eddy SP200 charging the EB70. I'm going to wait until, we, we're having an overcast day here today, as you can see, but I'm gonna wait. I, looking up in the sky and see some possibility of a breakthrough so when that happens we'll get the wattage for you all right we're using our SP 500 portable blue eddy solar panel we got a break in the Sun you can see we're doing pretty well with it 166 watts right at the moment so doing pretty good and it's not a very good day to be doing this because we've had some rain clouds are moving in and out but uh, when we got a break in the Sun you can see the panels doing very very well charging the blue eddy EB 70 and that's another way through solar that you can charge
Now we just finished the capacity test on the EV70 and just wanted to go over the results. Um, Blue Eddy reserves 10% of the 716 watt hours uh, to protect the battery. So of the 716, you actually have 644 watt hours available. And then of that 644 watt hours, you've got inverter um, waste, you've got electrical waste inside um, the Blue Eddy itself. So basically a good rating is 85% or above. So of the 644 we had available, we got roughly 575 watt hours. Now it switched over to 570. A kilowatt meter doesn't put in that last digit, but just I was watching it very, very closely. So I know it was at least at 575. So with that, that puts us at 89% um, efficiency <clears throat> on the inverter. So that's a good number. That's a very good number. So if you're 85 or above, you're doing good. This particular test showed us that we could get 89, almost 90%. So the EB70 passes that test for me. I used a small personal heater for that. You could see that the watts were around 330 watts. And that was a high draw in a short period of time. If you use a lower draw, maybe that uh, capacity will be a little bit better. You might get a little bit more than uh, 575 watt hours. But at 575, I'm tickled to death with that. So, just wanted to give you that result. Okay. In closing, what do you guys think of the EB70? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this video. This is a little bit longer than what I normally do. And I covered a lot of material. Um, if you like the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel. Because I do stuff like this all the time. I'm trying to get a video out about once every week to two weeks. And... Um, I'm no fancy producer here, so what you see is what you get with some of the material. I do the best editing, editing that I can do, but uh, I'm just an old country boy here, and this is the types of videos we're doing. If you like them, like and subscribe to the channel, um, but uh, let me know what you think about the EB70. Let me know if you want to see me uh, try to do any other types of tests, but what I was trying to show you was things that you're going to use in the event of emergency that you're going to use around your home and what did you think of this running all four circuits on the transfer switch pretty impressive um, this has a, a 1400 watt surge which i didn't mention at the beginning of the video so and what that means is is that it can handle um, those compressors kicking in on your refrigerators and your freezers because it'll go over that 700 watts and it can go as high as 1400 but it can only do that for a few seconds and then it'll drop back down um or you know if it, if, if you have something that's over the 700 watts for a long period of time it's going to overload and, and shut your your outlets off but um we had two refrigerators a freezer um, two bedroom lights, kitchen and hallway lights, TV, direct TV, Roku, all running off this. You saw the watts that it was doing. This is an impressive machine and I knew that already because I've been using it and I love it. So tell me what you think. Um, like and subscribe to the channel and if you want to see more content on the Blue Eddy EB70, um, leave it down in the comments below and I'll try to accommodate you. Again, I thank you for your viewership and have a great day.